Besteri gabe, itzen mane ikonioke Francesca Martinelli doktoreari. Francesca Martinelli giza kapitalaren sorreran eta lan harremanetan doktorea da. Bergamo ko unibertsitatea eta Paris zortzi unibertsitatea anren eskutik. Gaur egun Centro Estudi Doc Foundationeko zuzendari nagusia da, hain zuzen ere, beronan dagoen ikerketa zentru bateko zuzendari. Besteri gabe, Martinelli doktorea zure daitza. Egunon, estoi muy feliz de estar aquí, e agradezco a la Diputación de Gispupoa por invitarme y a la Universidad de Mondragón, y ahora cambio en inglés. Um, I'm here to talk uh, about uh, platform uh, cooperatives and uh, um, to talk about it, I will uh, start uh, with a myth and end uh, uh, with another one. According to the Silicon Valley myth, every entrepreneur dreams uh, to uh, transform uh, its uh, startup build in his own garage in a unicorn company, which is uh, a company valued over $1 billion uh, uh, in the first years uh, of its life. Many of the platforms that we are used uh, to use today to exchange uh, goods and services, such as uh, Uber, Deliveroo, Airbnb, they used to be unicorn companies. So they are statistical rarities that break through the market, scaling up very quickly, creating monopoles and becoming multinationals. In recent years, however, we have seen that these platforms also created some problems. Workers end up in the gig economy from the sharing economy becoming gig workers. And they complain about um, uh, poor working conditions, also because they are considered self-entrepreneurs, self-employed, uh, uh, instead of employees from the platforms. Opaque algorithms used by the platforms introduce problems in the data organizations and the logic of controls. Profit is concentrated in few ends, and the companies that are behind the platforms exploit favorable taxation regimes and dumpings. Moreover, we observe in general a lack of bargaining power of consumers, workers, but also municipalities and states that find it very difficult to counter, counterface these realities uh, that cross borders in an utilitarian way. So the, the narrative of unicorn companies that force some people is a narrative of success and profits, for others is a narrative of exploitation and missed rights. But not everybody agrees with these rights, with these narratives. And so counter narratives also arise, such as the one of platform cooperativism. The narrative of uh, platform cooperatism was introduced at first in 2014 by the activist and researcher uh, Trevor Schultz. And it was introduced uh, with the slogan, let's clone the art of uh, Uber and Airbnb and transform it uh, in a cooperative. However, in recent years, this concept uh, has evolved and uh, today we can define a um, platform cooperative as a cooperative that is created by consumers or workers that want to obtain a better control uh, on their production, on the means of production, which is actually the, uh, the, the platform. So at the center, we have the cooperative and the platform and the technology are a tool that support the exchange and distribution of goods, of services within a community. And these platforms is democratically governed and there is the ownership of this platform by consumers and workers. 
Since uh, this concept uh, was created, many, many entrepreneurs of the internet started to build new uh, platform cooperatives and also thanks to the support of courses such as the platform uh, COPS Now uh, that was uh, uh, released during the pandemic by Trevor Schultz with the support of the New School University of New York and the Mondragon University. And the Mondragon University is still organizing and leading courses uh, to support the birth of new uh, uh, platform cops. The platform cooperative, cooperative is consortium, which is a consortium of this kind of cooperative founded by Trevor Schultz, counts that today there are more than 300 cooperatives in around 50 countries in the world. And in this movement, there are very different cooperatives there are cooperatives that have a long history and the cooperatives uh, that, have, that, have, that are startups. Uh, long history cooperatives usually recognize themselves in this idea to use technology uh, for uh, the community and members' benefits. While projects and startups are usually created or by gig workers that want to obtain better working conditions, or also by uh, digital entrepreneurs that find in the cooperative model an answer to their needs of equity and fairness and horizontality. Now we'll focus on some uh, case study just to give you an idea uh, of uh, what platform cops are. I start with the case of artists, because you know artists are the first gig workers. And the word gig indicates exactly that, because the word gigs came from engagement, which indicates the uh, unique and occasional performance of an artist in the performing arts. So they have always faced multiple situations with multiple clients, multiple contracts, uh, uh, isolation, uh, uh, various locations to play, and uh, therefore they always face uh, uh, economic difficulties, uh, uh, in discontinuity in their work and in their incomes, and also lack of bargaining power. In front of this uh, situation, in 1919, a group of musicians uh, decided to create uh, the worker cooperative Doc Servizi and their purpose was to regain control over the work, their work, being recognized, and uh, uh, face and declare the work. In this model, workers uh, have at the same time the freedom of uh, freelancers and the protection of uh, employees, the social protections, since they are hired by the cooperative. And this model was so effective that today, Doc Servizi, is in Italy, the largest cooperative in the entertainment field. And it's also part of a network of eight companies that together cover all the cultural and creative industries professions. We are talking about journalists, musicians, technicians, teachers, communicators, photographers, designers, uh, wedding planners, and so on. Uh, this network uh, counts more than 8,800 uh, members uh, spread in uh, 29 offices uh, uh, in Italy and offer many services to its members from accounting and billing uh, to dedicated uh, uh, offices for communication, marketing, working abroad and specialized training. But imagine, we're talking about more than 8,000 members working in very different ways with different contracts, different timetables. So how to manage it without becoming mad? In 2012, uh, Doc Servizi decided to introduce the high technological digital platforms that optimize the procedures uh, in, a in, a in a digital way. 
so that they can all uh, manage these activities. And uh, these platforms was at first created to manage uh, this continuous uh, activity of workers. It has become more and more uh, a tool to support uh, self-entrepreneurship of members because it connects members among them, members with clients, and help in the management of safety procedures, uh, the selling of products and services. Other cases uh, in the uh, artistic field are smart, which was uh, created in Belgium in 1998 uh, as a multi-stakeholder and is today a multi-stakeholder cooperative that reunites more than 32,000 uh, members in eight countries in Europe. Uh, and it was the first uh, reality that introduced a platform to manage this continuous work. Stoxy is a Canadian uh, platform COPS uh, that uh, was uh, created uh, to help photographers to collect royalties from their work, and today reunites more than 1,000 photographers coming from 65 countries. DigiD is a, a cooperative of digital music distribution, let's say the cooperative Spotify, uh, no, sorry, the, the, the cooperative that, that uh, sell royalties to Spotify and, um, and uh, YouTube. And uh, uh, it has more than uh, 6,500 uh, uh, members. Uh, and um, with this system, um, lots of the, the biggest of the margins goes uh, to the cooperative. Resonate, uh, this is the cooperative Spotify. Uh, it's a multi-stakeholder cooperative that was created with the aim to uh, give more royalties to the musicians in order to give them more sustainable careers and uh, it also involved a uh, um, fan of artists. Minstivu is a, a worker cooperative that was created to create a, a cooperative streaming system alternative to the venture capitalist one. And Art.cop, it's a network of cooperatives in the field of the arts that work, it's a platform that support the fundraising for artists. Beyond uh, the artistic field, we can focus on the gig workers and gig uh, economy realities. Of course, also gig workers decide to create cooperatives to obtain better working conditions. And uh, there is, for example, CopCycle, that is uh, a federation of cooperatives of riders that was created after uh, uh, the revolts of 2016 and uh, it offers various services to uh, its cooperatives, such as a platform. And your collective is one of the cooperative of the federation and it was created by a group of riders that wanted to have an alternative to the exploitation of the gig economy and they created this uh, cooperative and used the platforms uh, um, of a cop cycle to track and organize their work. Also, teachers use platforms because many teachers around the world uh, use a platform to find new jobs opportunity, but they are also exploited, above all, by Chinese platform. And so, a group of them decided to create the Worker Cooperatives My Cool Class, and now over 300 uh, teachers, freelancers teachers, are part of this cooperative that offer a platform to teach and match with students. In the field of uh, uh, mobility, uh, we have a very old cooperative, uh, which is the Italian Cotabo, Cooperative of Taxi Driver of Bologna. It was created in 1962. It counts now uh, 700 taxi, and it can uh, be a part of the movement today because it uses a very uh, modern system to organize um, the activity of taxi driver. Ridego uh, was created in France in 2015 and is a system, is a cooperative uh, for car sharing and it's also combined car sharing with public transports uh, and bicycles. And uh, they decided to use the algorithm also to support uh, uh, unemployed people and give uh, money uh, to people that are uh, vulnerable and fragile. There are also uh, cases, of course, of platform cops uh, in the touristic field. Most well-known case is Airbnb. Easy to understand what it is. It was created exactly to counter the problems created by Airbnb, and uh, part uh, of the money that uh, are. Um, 
given to Airbnb go, uh, goes to support uh, social projects in the city where you uh, rent a house. Uh, Les Oiseaux de Passage uh, was created in France, and it's another kind of platform where uh, there are communities, travel agency, uh, researcher, and uh, they were the platform was created to offer a different access to tourists uh, via storytelling, and uh, the idea is to host not only tourists, but also younger people searching for uh, a home where they work, uh, refugees, or people that need to go, uh, that have relatives at the hospitals and, in a and need a place to stay. Last but not least, we have also some sectors that are poor or impoverished, and uh, that decided, and people decide to experiment with platform cops. One example is the Cooperazia. It was created in Amsterdam by a group of jour freelancers, journalists, and they want to create the cooperative, uh, to reverse the power relationship uh, between the publishing house and the journalist. So the cooperative is a publishing house, and this helps them to obtain uh, better working condition and more sustainable careers. Kataki was created in Brazil by a group of catadores who are waste pickers. And um, uh, what they do is using the platform to track their work uh, and uh, have the opportunity to raise more money uh, while they work and better organize it. Up and Go was created in New York by domestic workers that needed to better organize their work. For example, when somebody uh, is uh, sick, uh, find a way to replace uh, this person immediately. And so they created uh, a cooperative with an application that uh, organized all the activity. Fin uh, I want to add also uh, a little open a little parenthesis after this case is about the topic of data cooperatives. This concept was introduced at first uh, in 2020 in the Euro European Commission, and the idea is uh, to use data cooperatives to provide uh, data services to uh, enterprise and individual entrepreneurs. And the idea is to have this cooperative uh, that help these uh, entrepreneurs to assess uh, a big amount of data, manage uh, the governance, which should be shared, of course, because it's a cooperative, uh, negotiate term and condition, and also solve disputes. Just to give you an example of an existing data cooperative, uh, there is the European Data Cooperative that was created by Invest Europe, which is the world's largest association of, of private capital providers. And uh, uh, this uh, reality collects uh, uh, data from uh, whole Europe, but uh, there is a single entry, so all the data goes in uh, one database. They organize it in a standardized way with a standardized methodology, and so they can create pan-European statistics that are very useful for the shareholders uh, of uh, the cooperative. Of course, this model I, I talk uh, about are very different from the unicorn models uh, of other platforms, and in various ways. First of all, because, uh, uh, of course, when you create a cooperative and you are a worker, you don't create a cooperative to be exploited. And so, uh, of course, uh, you create uh, this cooperative to work with better fares, have decent working conditions, and insurance for your work, and uh, in this way, uh, decent work is at the core. And most important, you don't have to give up to flexibility. You know, big platforms claims that you have to give up to your rights if you uh, want to have flexibility. That's not true. You can, be, you can both have rights and flexibility uh, in time management at the same time. Second of all, uh, the modi uh, mo economic model of these uh, uh, platform cooperatives is not based uh, on intermediation, which is the extraction of value from the relations uh, that happen on the, uh, the platform. But it's based on this intermediation. This means you know, that every time that you up, uh, optimize the technology, the platforms, you have more money. And the plus surplus value that you uh, gain usually goes to the owners. In this case, in the case of platform cooperatives, the owners is not Travis Kalanick, 
the founder, for example, of Uber, but are the, uh, are the consumers and workers that created the cooperatives. So there is no exploitation, no speculation, and once the, the costs are shared, all the money goes to uh, the workers and the consumer. Then, uh, the cooperative I study uh, usually uh, um, use technology in an ethical way because there is no, there is no shift of uh, a managerial task from humans to an opaque algorithm. Usually, uh, the organization is always human, team-based, and then the platform is used to optimize procedures, uh, track work so work can be declared, uh, support self-management. And in this way, also data are used in a transparent way because members decide how to organize their data and they choose to know where the data are and what for are used. Finally, there are also cases in which uh, people can obtain more uh, power uh, and the representation uh, power. Uh, they are no more isolated. Entering the cooperative, uh, they negotiate better work. They can negotiate better working condition within the market. If they are hired, they also become employees, and so they can be protected by collective bargaining agreements. And there are also cases uh, in which cooperatives uh, play the role of spokesperson of these workers. Of course, this model is not perfect. There are also some limits. And so I, here I uh, bring out some of them. For example, being a people-centered model, uh, it's not so easy to scale like in other cases. It's difficult also for these cooperatives to assess fundings and investment because you know the share of the cooperatives are not remunerated. Then democracy is a slow process and not, it's not always easy also to replicate this process um, on, the, um, on the platform. And uh, it's also difficult for this cooperative to compete uh, with uh, realities uh, that uh, use favorable taxation regimes, dumping, have no employees, so it's complicated. And there is also to consider uh, a low level of digitation uh, among the cooperatives. Luckily, I study also uh, successful cases, and so uh, I will bring you four uh, uh, main strategies for platform cooperatives to overcome this problem. First of all, the golden rule of uh, every uh, enterprise, which is differentiate the market, because an enterprise should not depend only on one client or one sector. Second of all, it's better to, to, to choose a business to business and business to, uh, than a business to consumer uh, um, activities. And these uh, allow to better schedule work revenues and so offer better working condition to members. Then, uh, it's important to reject uh, the monopoly perspective, above all if it's the market, it's already in the hands of the big platforms. And uh, uh, it's more important to focus on the needs of the local uh, reality and the community and the territory. And last but not least, uh, adopt uh, a shared technology perspective, which means uh, create uh, a, ne a network uh, to share the cost of the creation of the platform, the implementation and the data management. It's very important to uh, create an ecosystem, uh, to reason in a way of an ecosystem model. But what could be very important is also the role that policymaker could have. Of course, every enterprise needs to move some step forward, but also policymakers can play the round part at local, national, uh, and uh, European and international level. So what the policymaker should do to support uh, platform cops are, for example, promoting this cooperative model to manage platforms, ensure cooperatives to assess uh, finance and uh, business support mechanism, uh, recognize a legal, uh, an appropriate legal framework for uh, cooperatives that use innovative uh, models to manage working activity, then supporting training course and incubation paths for the creation of new startups, such as the ones that are organized by the Mondragon University. And support also research projects that study this model and the evolution of this model. And last but not least, ensure fair competition and the level playing field among platforms. On this last, 
point, policy point, um, we, have, we are going to have some help uh, by the European Union because you know, today we are talking a lot about the platform work directive. We find the roots of the platform work directive back in 2016 with the European agenda for all the co collaborative economy. Then Ursula von der Leyen claimed in 2020 that she would have work uh, on platform work to support the worker. And she kept her word because last year, uh, in December, um, the uh, draft of the directive uh, improving the working condition of platform workers was released. The idea was to obtain a I directive in 2022, but the debate is still ongoing and it, it will be very difficult to have one single approach at the end, one single perspective on this directive. Uh, but the general idea is to support workers, uh, helping them to be recognized as employees and uh, to guarantee also uh, a transparent algorithm management. In the European context, uh, the uh, movement, uh, the cooperative movement is of course following this debate. And uh, if you want more information, you can go on the website of SECOP, which is the European Confederation of Industrial and Service Cooperatives. Uh, and uh, with, that with the, the, the group uh, stand, non-standard workers and platform is following the debate. And I am uh, part uh, of this group. Uh, but, um, uh, to give this speech, uh, I was also uh, asked to think about the future of platform crops and uh, uh, be like a futurologist. Um, I think that the future of platform cooperatives uh, could be um, understand only if it will be related to the, the future of the platforms in Europe per se. First of all, have you seen that there are many platform cooperatives in different sectors? not only riders, but this is because platforms are already widespread in Europe in many fields, not only riders, also entertainment workers, creative workers, psychologists, uh, translators, interpreters, many workers are, are using platforms to work also in the care system. And today we are talking about uh, 28 million people in Europe that are working on, have, on uh, uh, more than 500 platforms. And this number is going to increase. The numbers talk about um, uh, 43 million workers by the 2025. Of course, the directive could help in bringing uh, more sustainable careers to these workers, but the directive won't change the evolution of the work market. And we all know that the work market is becoming even more uh, flexible the careers are more individualized, there is a, a widespread outsourcing, and this is not going to change. So many workers are uh, probably uh, faced more uncertain working conditions. In this situation, this, is, this is a situation where workers are exploited are always a situation where workers react and a situation of resistance. And so this could be a fertile ground for uh, the development of cooperatives per se. And uh, uh, researchers think that the, in the future there will be more, more cooperatives. And so also platform cooperatives have a chance to become more and more uh, diffuse and be an alternative, uh, important alternative to isolation, unpredictable income, uh, and lack of control over work because they are uh, an important tool, they can be a important tool for social innovation. Just think about the fact that the margins can be huge because today, on average, we have 40, 50,000 of workers um, that are involved in platform cooperatives uh, in Europe. But I told you at the beginning that uh, I would have started with a myth and end with another one, so I kept my promise too. And since 2017, in direct uh, contrast with the uh, pro profit-oriented and uh, idea of the unicorn companies, I call the platform cooperatives unicorn companies. Uh, sorry, <laughs> Pegasus companies. I chose Pegasus because uh, uh, Pegasus uh, is European, like cooperatives that were created in uh, uh, Rochdale in UK in 1844. 
and uh, Pegasus uh, is also very royal, uh, loyal to his knight, Bellerofonte. Like the cooperative is loyal to the person that put at its core. Pegasus has also two wings. One is the technology, which is necessary to be competitive on the market, and the other one is the capability to connect people that are usually isolated on the market. With the two, you can fly hike. Then, in the Greek mythology, is told that uh, Pegasus, at the end of his life, decided to fly in the highest part of the sky and become a, a cloud of sparkling stars. And this is how the Pegasus constellation was born. And a constellation is like the network of people connected by the cooperative. If you took away only one star, you don't have any more a constellation, but you have just a mass of star. But a constellation is also something more. The first time that I saw this constellation, I was in Indonesia, but this constellation is not uh, a constellation of that hemisphere. So I think this could be a metaphor useful for all uh, the activists and the cooperators. The idea is that we have to become visible. We have to be able to show that an alternative uh, model to the dominant economic paradigm exists. And this model is the cooperative one. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Eskerik Asko. Uh, thank you, Professor Martinelli, for your for your insights. Uh, I don't know if uh, there is any question. Balago, Galdera, Rick, Audiencia, and Ivali Masulte, aprovecha tú. No. No. <laughs> okay. So thank you again, okay. uh, Professor Martinelli, for thank your you. insights it's <laughs> and uh, giving us uh, this uh, idea about the, uh, how cooperative. Uh, and how uh, cooperativism can respond to this uh, challenge and this new phenomenon of, uh, of the platform economy. Thank you okay. so much. Thank, Thank you. you.